I, hey, uh, I'd like to start by introducing William Link. William Link is a very, very well-known uh, Cadillac uh, enthusiast and restorer. Um, and uh, he's quite an expert in El Dorado Brahms, but you'll see for yourself. Hi, William. Hello, how are you? Good, good, good. Why don't you tell us about some of the unique features and the real innovations that uh, the Brahms captured back in 1957. Okay, well, probably the first thing to start out with um, that had the stainless steel roof, which was unique to the Brome, and the suicide doors, and they had basically a pillarless design where there was uh, you know, pretty much an open entry uh, to the car. And one thing that's very unique that I think about the Brome is at a casual glance, it looks like a two-door because of the way they put this hip in the styling, it, a lot of people are surprised to learn it's actually a four door. And the rear door, of course, is very small. You know, I, um, uh, not to jump into the interior, but I love the sleek styling. Uh -huh. to, to me, it's total mid century modern Space Jetsons, age. Yep. right? I yes, mean, total absolutely. Jetsons to me, yeah, yeah. But you're right. I mean, if we, in closing the doors, you know, this, this line. Yes. It's just, you know, total hard top, right? Absolutely. I mean, yeah. And then, of course, like I said, I like this hip right here yeah. that makes it look like a, a regular two-door car. Uh, and the way they did the, the scallop in the door. Um, the wheels are uh, an alloy wheel, which was innovative at the time. They came out in 1955 uh, as the first design uh, as a Saber wheel. And they were with Alcoa aluminum. So it's aluminum that's and been steel. chrome plated. Yes, and steel, uh, steel rim. So it was kind of a, a conglomerate, I guess, amalgamated. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, the El Dorado Bone came with two four barrels in 57. They made uh, 400 units. And um, the 57 also has a unique feature where the coil is mounted on the firewall. Um, it had air conditioning, basically had all the options. There were no options on this car, save for interior and color selections. Which they had a huge selection. Yes. And this car is kind of unique because it has a wool interior. Uh, most of them were leather, but this one was optioned with the wool interior. Well, um, st sticking with the, uh, the front, these vents are, I, I always thought these were cosmetic. But yeah, they are open. Yeah. They actually are open yeah. to the inside of the fender. And there's also vents here for the horns. That's what these round circles are on the front. Those are actually for the horn vents, uh, specifically on the driver's side. And is there anything unique about the horns? Yes, there's four of them. Of and course, not two, not one, not two, right. but four. And one's right. a trumpet. Okay. And they're uh, quite assertive, which uh, I can try it here. Sure. Yeah. So um, since we're talking about the front, um, the, these, the bumpers are actually uh, quite different. Yes, they're aluminum. And um, that's pretty unique. And I think they did that for production costs because this was such a limited production. It was less money to cast them in aluminum hmm. on such a low, low production scale. So both front and rear bumpers are aluminum. Because off the top of my head, I don't know of any other chrome-plated aluminum bumpers on, on production cars. Uh, yeah, I'd have to say you're correct. The regular Eldorado had them on the rear bumper exhaust ports, like in 55. Mm -hmm. But uh, you're, you're correct. And when you're looking at a Brome, if it needs chrome, which most of them do, uh, it's quite expensive to re-chrome aluminum. I bet. I and bet. so this car has beautiful chrome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So at least you don't have that expense. So uh, what, what about the headlights? Uh, four headlights were illegal in 57 in most states, and, but they were anticipating that change. And so Cadillac went ahead and was a, uh, came out with the four headlights as a pioneer. Uh, Chrysler offered its Imperial with one headlight, but easily adapted to four headlights, which they did after a few months of production. Very rare to find an Imperial single headlights, but they, that's how they solved that problem. The Cadillac Brome came out with four headlights right from the start. Oh, fan fantastic. It has a reverse opening hood, which was unique. 
Yeah, quite rare. Mm -hmm. And uh, what's uh, on top of the generator? We have we have something that the Eldorado uh, Brome had air suspension. Mm -hmm. It was automatic leveling, and that's the compressor. It was electric compressor. The other cars, Buick, Chevrolet, had a belt-driven compressor off the power steering. So the Brome was unique with this electric compressor for the air suspension. So, um, and there was a particular reason for the air suspension that didn't really just have to do with the ride quality. No, I believe that it was actually a styling uh, cue, which uh, Harley Earl wanted the car really low. And because of the geometry and the mechanics of having coil springs, the air suspension better suited for the 55 and a half inch height that Harley Earl was looking for. So, and that's measured from the top of the roof. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Because, I mean, this one, one, one thing that makes the Brome spectacular is how low it is. Yes. Right? Correct. I mean, it, it looks like it's been chopped and, and yes. uh, lowered, uh -huh. right? Yep. Yeah, that was um, that was the styling trend. Yeah, yeah, no, fan, fantastic. Yeah. And let's see the, of course, though, like I said, the Brougham had four four wheel air suspension, which that was unique in itself, and it had a, a memory seat, which uh, was a his and her favorite position seat, and the idea is when you open the door the seat would go down and all the way back. And, um, and then when you were seated, it would either go to your favorite position or her favorite position. And um, those are the controls on the door. Yeah, right, right here, these are the controls. Now, um, you, you can, I, I would imagine that uh, they didn't have, you know, uh, computer systems, right? <laughs> yes. There's a box under the seat um, that uh, is a brain box, and it's, it's a pretty good size, pretty heavy. And um, I always joke about the memory seat that they actually have a perfect memory in that um, it remembers exactly where it broke in 1959. <laughs> but I decided to fix it or try to fix the brain box on another car and I opened it and it, it's relays and wires and and I looked at it and I thought okay it's got Alzheimer's. <laughs> so, so they they basically tried they, by using relays and such they were basically trying to emulate what now is is all done by chips. Correct. But using electromagnetic. Magnetic, yeah. All right. And it's actually the same technology as the signal seeking radio that finds your favorite position. It's a it's an enhanced version of that where you could select your favorite stations. You could select your favorite seat position. It's the same technology. And uh, the Brome was the first to to introduce a um, fully transistorized uh, signal seeking uh, radio. Radio, yeah, very first industry's first tra fully transistorized radio. Yeah, yeah. yeah, fantastic. So, so you, when you turn it on, it comes. It's instant. On. Yes. Yeah. yeah, very nice. And the uh, the turn signal winkers on the dash uh, were unique to the Brome. And um, they're actually kind of a, a form of fiber optic. So the, the green it, tips, basically, the, that kind of look like bat wings yes, uh, uh -huh. or, or bat ears, perhaps. They're a light transfer. They're not a direct lighted item, which was kind of a technological advance there. The seats are individually wrapped coil springs, uh, which... Um, we can appreciate today having everything just as a hunk of foam. Right, right. Well, back in the classic era, that was very common, Correct. right, for uh -huh. the high-end yeah. cars. Uh, but certainly by the end of the 50s, that was passe and, and quite expensive. Correct. Uh, speaking of expense, so, so uh, how much did a Brome cost and, and how relatively, how, you know, how expensive was it? It was $13,074. And I think a Rolls Royce was nine. Wow. So it was, it was quite a bit different. The Mark, the Lincoln Mark was 10, and they were trying to be one above the Lincoln Mark. So it was, in fact, the most expensive production car. Yes, uh, in the world. In, in, yeah, in the world. Wow. Yes. That's, that's and amazing. that list price, $13,074, was not exceeded 
until 1975 with the introduction of the new Cadillac Seville. Oh my God! It was the wow. first time that that list price by was Cadillac. exceeded by any. Well, by, correct, probably yeah, by, by Cadillac. Cadillac. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, or an American car, okay. probably. All right. Yeah, right. That yeah. would make sense. Yeah. Okay. All right. Very good. Yeah. Um, and uh, why don't we why don't we go back to the interior? Because okay. I, I think we, you, there are some surprises in terms of. Uh, well, one thing that I'm, I'm thinking of right now is, first of all, these door panels in 57, when they first came out, were stamped aluminum. And they were painted to kind of look spacey, uh, like you were talking about the seat sides. The problem was the, they couldn't get the paint to stick to the aluminum, and it was curling off. So later models, which this is a later 57, they upholstered the door panel in leather. And these interiors are full leather. There's no vinyl in a brome. They're full leather. And actually, as I say that, I believe these tops are vinyl. <laughs> but um, yeah, but we've seen some that have the painted. Uh, yes, uh -huh. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. you're right. Early ones. And the paint was yeah. uh, flaking off for yes. sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, okay. very good. And it has power vent windows, which are here. Yeah, and um, which was kind of a unique feature. Then they have the automatic dimming. That's what this is right here. Yeah, Dims the, your headlights the automatically. The Autronic Eye. Autronic Eye. Yeah, right. And that was a pretty common Cadillac feature. Right. And then um, the, the Brome had, you could get wool carpet. Or I'm sorry, nylon carpet, which is what this is. But it was a deluxe nylon carpet. Or you could get sheepskin. Um, most people opted for this carpet. I think they could foresee that the sheepskin would wear uh, pretty quickly. Yeah. All right. And then with the brome, they had some vanities items. Okay, here's the vanity items. And there's a, a shelf here that is a mirror that you can, that was for the lady. And then it, it forms a shelf. And then here's the compact which was a ladies' makeup compact. You use cigarette storage on one end. And then powder puff, comb, and a nickel for a payphone for emergency and lipstick dispenser. This and leather strap is supposed to pull it up. And then you have a cigarette case for the cigarettes. And then magnetized uh, stainless steel shot glasses that they would stick on there. They go here. And then a tissue dispenser. And those are the items for the front. And then going to the rear, we have a handheld mirror, which is beveled. It fits in there. And then a writing pad and a cross pencil, leather bound, and then promise her anything, but give her our page. <laughs> they gave you the our page perfume. This is a brand new one. It's not unopened. It still has the instructions. I don't recommend getting this stuff on you. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Very nice. So that was that was the vanity yeah, stuff. Yeah, how how terrific! Um, and um, the and the only the only thing really missing from this set is the atomizer Correct. for the for the perfume. But yeah. uh, how how special! That's great. Yes, and then the doors when you uh, put the car in drive, they go they lock all the doors. Uh, they don't have an unlock feature though. So if you get in this car and wonder why the doors lock and they don't unlock, they didn't have an unlock feature. They only <laughs> lock them. So you're trapped in there unless, but here's the manual release right here. Well, they were making things up, right? Yes. You know, as, mm -hmm. they, were, as they were going along. Actually, I, one, one feature that I love about Brohm's is the auto open and close feature for the truck. Yes, we were going to uh, talk about that. There's a button yes. inside, uh, inside the... Uh, yeah, it says, box. Uh, open and close for the trunk. Yeah, fan fantastic. And this um, clock is unique. 
what was it called a drum style clock. Very nice. Well, William, uh, we absolutely learned a lot today. Well, here's uh, the power vent window, which we always we always do. Um, and uh, yeah, so th thank you very okay. much for sharing. And uh, yeah, we'll see you on the road. Thank you. Thank you.